Okay, so you may have just uh, got yourself your first guitar and you're kind of a bit sort of wondering how you get started in this thing and it can be a bit daunting at times. So um, I'm going to start in this short lesson just from the very beginning. And um, the first thing you really want to do is um, actually nothing to do with really playing the guitar at all, but it's actually getting yourself a tuner. And um, there's many different tuners in the market, but a really handy one you can get is a little Snark, uh, S-N-A-R-K. And they basically just clip on the headstock of the guitar here. A uh, guitar is not like a piano where you just tune it and forget about it. Um, you've really got to keep on top of things as far as the tuning stability goes. Guitars will go in and out of tune quite rapidly, actually, depending on the climate you're in. And the first thing you've got to learn to do is, uh, is get it in tune or else you're going to learn the wrong sounds when you're practicing your chords. So um, there's many different ways to tune a guitar, but the standard way for starting off is to tune the sixth string here which is the heaviest string. Um, everybody thinks this is the first string, this is actually the sixth string. So it goes the thinnest being the first to the second, to the third, to the fourth, to the fifth, and the sixth. So you want to tune the sixth string to the note of E, uh, the fifth string to the note of A, the fourth to D, the third to G, the second to B, and the first is E again. So a little silly rhyme to remember that by is elephants and dogs grow big ears. Um, silly little rhyme, but it, it helps you remember it. So, and then when you clip your tuner on, uh, you want to. This goes by by uh, vibrations, by the way, so you don't actually have to even really pick the string that that loudly. You should get in in your top corner. You probably can't see this, but you should get an E coming up there, and then just adjust your your tuning keys to uh, the correct pitch, which would be dead center. So you really want the green light to come on and no red lights. So we're just going to tune this to E. A would be the next string, that's in tune, D, G, E, okay, so at this stage you probably don't know any chords, so effectively you're not going to know if you're in tune or not until you check on the, uh, on the tuner, so this is vital before you get started. And the first thing I always do before um, we go any further is really just start with what's called an E major chord, which is a very, very basic chord. But a nice one to start with because there's not a huge amount of stretching involved with this hand, and, and, and with this hand you can play all the strings. Some chords you'll learn later on, there's certain strings you have to leave out, but for this chord you can just whack them all, so. There's your E major chord, and um, with regards to the left hand, the first finger would be your index finger, second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. Unlike piano, we don't count the fifth, uh, the thumb. Uh, that's going to be on the back of the neck. And another thing you don't really want to do is, is have the thumb too much pressed into the back. You want to keep it nice and relaxed over the top, depending on the size of your hand. And the other thing is uh, to be very aware of, use the tips of your fingers when you're actually pressing the strings down. If you use the flat part of your finger, you're going to run into trouble when you touch the other strings inadvertently. So you're going to get lots of this, which you don't want. So tips of your fingers and um, also, don't hold the guitar um, tightly like this. Always make sure that your hand is sort of facing the start of the body of the guitar. So you want to have your hand like that. And then when you bring it around, you want to leave a little gap at the bottom here. If you hold the guitar neck too tightly, you'll mute the top string. So you want to have just a little bit of space just in here so the strings can ring. So I'm going to call this chord out to you. It's the, um, first of all, we're going to start with our third finger on the fifth string. So again, one, two, three, four, five. And the second fret. For those of you who don't know, these are actually called frets, which are the little boxes on the guitar. Most guitars are marked. Uh, some are marked the first fret with a dot, third fret, fifth. And um, we're going to start at the second fret. So third finger on the fifth string, second fret, right on the tip. Uh, you're then going to use your second finger for the fourth string, just below it on the same fret. So make sure you can get both fingers in the correct fret, the second, and don't let them touch each other or else touch the, uh, the other strings, just keep them right on the tips. And then our first finger, our index finger, we want it to be on the third string of the first fret. So this is kind of like, I always think of this as like little steps, you know, you can just see your fingers just dropping down like that. Okay, and then when you've got those into position, you can try strumming the strings. You just basically want to start very lightly at the top, on the sixth string, and just bring your arm down. 
Um, before you get into strumming, you don't really, it's, it's worth remembering, you don't really want to start strumming from your wrist. Um, unless you're playing a lot of funky stuff, you mostly want to strum from the elbow. So just be, uh, be aware of keeping your hands straight and your arms straight. So the chord should sound like this. It's your first chord, your E major. If it sounds like this, you're not pressing down hard enough. If you're getting any individual strings that are muted, the likelihood is you've probably dropped your hand down and your fingers are touching the other strings, so it's worth taking your hand away every now and again and just repositioning them. So. If you want to start strumming, you can just start a basic up and down strum pattern. Be very aware not to bring your hand around in an arch. This is the worst thing you can do, this kind of thing here. You want to keep your forearm pretty much on the guitar and just, as I say, strum from the elbow. Okay, so after you've mastered that, you're going to want to change to another chord. And a straightforward chord to change to after your E major would be the D major chord. This is a chord that you actually don't play all the strings on. You only want to play the top four, so from the fourth string down to the first string. And uh, this chord I'll call out to you, it's your first finger on the third string of the second fret, second finger on the first string of the second fret, and third finger on the second string of the third fret. Again, as I say, top four strings. So again, if you're getting any, any little muted sounds, you're either not pressing the string down hard enough, or you're touching the other strings. So, we want to just change between these two chords. And the easiest way to do that is actually to keep your first finger on. So when you're playing your E chord, you want to lift off just the second and third fingers and move your first finger up a fret to the second fret on the third string where it is. Then place your second finger onto the first string, your third finger onto the second string of the third fret. Then move back again. Be very careful on the D chord not to hit the fifth and, fifth and sixth strings. And after you've done that and you've practiced that a few times, hopefully you'll start to get into the rhythm of it. You can start strumming. It's important to go very, very slowly at this stage. It's not a race. You don't want to go too fast. You're just going to run into trouble. So really slowly. Mm -hmm. Leave this first finger on the string, just move it up one fret. And after you've done that and you've got more comfortable with that, you can start counting out bars. Now basically bars are little measures of time within music. It doesn't have to be actual music, it could be a rest. But if we count bars in groups of four, commonly called 4-4, four, four, you'd be counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So a good thing to do is either get a metronome or else use your foot. Um, if you've got good timing, or I'll simply just count. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you could change after every bar or every group of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And what you're doing there is the slower you go, you're allowing yourself more time to change into the next chord. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you've got comfortable with that, you can either speed up your counting or you can set the metronome a little higher. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Or else you can actually start bringing in a strum. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Another thing I used to do was actually not even play the guitar with my right hand. I used to, used to actually get the chord formed with my left hand and then just sit and change like this. So you could even sit and do this watching television or you know doing something else. You could just sit and quietly do that. It gets you your muscle memory, which is really what you want to aim for. You don't really want to be in the early days. You're going to be thinking of exactly where to put your fingers, but after that, after a while of doing that, you're going to want to just have the chord formed, so your muscle knows exactly where to go on each chord. And you should be able to do it with your eyes closed after a while. So. so practice slowly, take your time and be patient and good things will happen.